Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, and I have an esoteric question for you today. And that question is, if you could only choose one sensor size, like full frame, APS-C, micro four thirds, one inch, whatever it may be, what sensor size would you choose? And I'll tell you how I came up with that, which is kind of bizarre, but sometimes I can't fall asleep at night. I'll wake up in the middle of the night, actually, uh, maybe, you know, use the facilities or whatever, and I just can't fall back asleep. And unfortunately, my mind will race, sometimes on negative things, sometimes on positive things, sometimes on neutral things. But, you know, an hour or so goes by and I'm... I'm going, oh, sleep, please sleep. Of course, this is less of a problem now that I'm retired than it was when I was working 12 and 14 hour days. However, it still is a pain in the neck. But this one particular night, what happened was I was thinking about if I could only have one sensor size, what would it be? And that question then bifurcated into two segments. One segment was if I can only have one camera of that sensor size, what sensor size would I choose? And the other was if I could have multiple cameras, but I had to stick with just one sensor size, what would it be? Now, if you listen to my or watch my channel, you know that I am a camera nut. I have camera sensor sizes of all different types, from little tiny compact cameras to one inch sensors to micro four thirds to APS-C to full frame cameras. And I tend to shift around based on my particular needs and what I, what I need for that particular shoot. Um, and usually in professional jobs, I'm using a full frame camera but it's not necessarily because of the improved image, which I think is kind of marginal and pretty much unnoticeable to most consumers, or, and even to myself, unless I'm doing pixel peeping. But I use a larger camera because I like the physical controls on that camera. And when I'm doing professional work, I really need to be able to look at a camera and say, okay, this is ISO, this is how I adjust my metering, okay, this is where I turn to adjust the shutter speed. I need to have that in front of me because I'm in a pressured situation and I need to make adjustments on the fly as quickly as possible. But of course, other cameras of different sensor sizes have those controls too, and I certainly could adopt to those other cameras. And there's a very big negative to APS, or excuse me, to full frame cameras. And that negative is everything is big. So even if I get a little Sony camera, which is very small for a full frame camera, I still have to deal with these ginormous lenses. And, and actually, for me personally, the Sonys are always kind of off balance. Um, a, a long time ago, I bought a Nikon DF camera. That was that really cool looking retro camera. And I didn't like it, despite its incredible cool look and the fact that it was uh, it was using the same sensor as a D4, which was a top of the line sensor. It was so unbalanced. It was so awkward to use. I kind of find that with my Sony cameras too. So really, I kind of mostly use Nikon and Canon full frame cameras. But that is not the sensor size that I would choose. If I could choose only one sensor size, believe it or not, it would probably be an APS-C size sensor, which is a common sensor in very cheap cameras. But you could get everything that you need. And those, those sensors now are made so well that they have really good low light performance. They have really good dynamic range. Um, and you could definitely get bokeh from those lenses as you can from Micro Four Thirds, just a little manipulation. And I think even though APS-C is better, I mean, excuse me, full frame is better a little bit, it's a very marginal difference. And the great advantage of the of the APS-C size cameras is you can get a camera that is fully functional, that's larger, like a D90 or a, a Nikon 7000 series camera that has all the buttons that you need for professional work, but yet if you can choose different sensor sizes, you can get a lot of cameras that are smaller. I mean, Fuji makes, they're not tiny, but you know, smaller cameras that are fully functional with their knobs and buttons. Or if you really need a camera like I do when I go hiking or backpacking or on nature walks, I want a pretty lightweight camera. I have a Canon M50, and I also have a Canon M100. Very small cameras with amazing capabilities in, in a tiny, lightweight package with excellent image quality. So for me, if I could if I had to choose only one sensor size, but I could have a multiple or multiple cameras, it would definitely be APS-C. But what if, hypothetically, I know these are hypothetical questions, what if I could only have one camera you know, I think it would be a micro four thirds camera. Again, I could do anything I need to do with that, those cameras, a little less light performance, uh, etc. but lenses are cheap, 
lenses are small, cameras are small, and if I stuck with something like an Olympus OMD EM5 or even OMD EM1, those are really small cameras fitted with the right lens. They would work just fine with my backpacking adventures, but also fitted with the right lens would work great in a professional environment. So not what you would expect. I think most people would say, I want the best top of the line camera, but that's what influencers are telling us that we need. So there's always a push with influencers to buy more. If you have an APS-C size sensor, they're telling you you need a full frame sensor. If you have a full frame sensor, they're telling you you need a mirrorless camera. If you have a mirrorless camera, they're telling you you need this $3,000 lens to go on the camera. There's always the push to do more, 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 and more. But for the vast majority of us, even professional photographers, that more is quantitatively not going to improve our photography ability, our ability to be creative, our ability to compose a photo. I mean, think about it. Let's say you buy a camera from nine or 10 years ago. Let's say you get a Nikon D300S or you get a um, an, a, an old, uh, like a Canon 5D, not mark anything, but it's an old 5D. And then you actually have to learn how to take photographs, but you have all the abilities there. You have all the controls there. You have you have the ability to put a flash on. You have the ability to buy used lenses of all different types. You can put little macro rings on and, and put filters on the front of the lenses and do all the things that you need to do. I guarantee to you, you are going to be able to produce professional level photography. Why do I know that? Because that's what professionals used a few years ago, and they were selling their stuff to billboards and bus stops and magazines and weddings, uh, stuff and events. They were doing all of that stuff with those cameras. Well, you could do them too with those cameras. So think about the, the uh, avoiding the what the influencers are telling you and focus on what you really want to do. Don't let a price tag stop you from becoming the photographer that you want to be. I really feel that there are some cheap accessories that you can have that will make a world of difference in your photography. I mean, just think about buying a third-party flash, uh, external flash, all or even two of them. They're, you can get them for 100 bucks or less each now, and they're quality flashes. Just think about what that would do to up your level of photography compared to buying uh, a $2,000 camera with a $3,000 lens. Probably the, the $100 flash is gonna, gonna do more for you. So with that, I just want you to think about it. You might have a very different opinion. That is totally okay. Please write it below. But you know, if you write some asinine comment, guess what? It's not gonna come up anyway, so save your fingers. Um, I, I would also encourage you to watch my, or read my blog, it's drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com if you wanna know my inner secrets. Um, also, I have a podcast, I haven't really posted to it recently, but there's over 200 episodes on a lot of mental health topics. I have experts on there, I have my wife on there who's also an expert, she's a PhD level psychologist. I'm on there sometimes just by myself, but a lot of different topics that you may find useful. Uh, and please, please, please like this if you like it. If you don't, that's okay too. Put a thumbs down. And I would really like it if you could subscribe to this channel. I want to grow this channel. I, I've been doing it forever. I don't really gain any monetary benefit from this channel whatsoever. I just want to pass on information and I want to counter all this commercialism that we have out here where YouTube is just being used as a vehicle to sell you shit. Good shit sometimes, but shit nonetheless. Take care, everyone. Bye.